Now to Hungary, where Prime Minister Viktor Orban says the coronavirus outbreak is expected to peak in early May. The country currently has fewer than 2,000 confirmed cases and just under 200 COVID-19 fatalities. In response to the pandemic, the government has imposed a nationwide lockdown and Parliament has approved sweeping emergency legislation that allows the Prime Minister to rule by decree. Well, with more on Hungary's response to the coronavirus pandemic and its relations with the European Union, I'm joined now by the Hungarian Foreign Minister, Peter Siato in Budapest. Thank you very much for your time. I've just given a bit of an overview of the cases in Hungary, but from the government's perspective, are you satisfied with the strategies that you've put in place to try and contain the pandemic? And do you think you've successfully done that so far? Look, there are uh, many fronts on which uh, we have to fight the uh, coronavirus. The first front and the most important front is definitely to uh, protect the uh, life and the health uh, situation uh, of the Hungarian uh, citizens. We have been massively importing the, um, those uh, products which are necessary from the perspective of uh, protecting uh, the people, the nurses, the doctors. So when it comes to masks, when it comes to respirators, ventilators, when it comes to protective uh, clothes, we have been uh, importing a massive number uh, of these uh, products and the supply of the Hungarian healthcare system uh, in this regard is uh, safe and uh, sustainable. On the other hand, uh, the other front is definitely the economic one, uh, where we have to make sure that the um, economy will be reboosted as soon as possible. That's why we have put together a uh, big package, a big plan, which amounts to 18 to 20 percent uh, of the GDP, through which uh, we uh, provide financial assistance, um, uh, training uh, subsidy, investment uh, incentive, and uh, loans with low interest rate to the Hungarian companies in order to be able to protect the jobs and if jobs are lost, to create uh, new ones to uh, replace them. So we are fighting. And uh, we hope that we will uh, get over this um, crisis uh, soon, as the neighboring countries uh, hope to do so as well. Well, we've been looking across the continent as to how different countries are thinking about easing lockdown restrictions. I know that you're reviewing it on a weekly basis. Is there an idea now of when that might start to happen in Hungary? Look, if I make a very small uh, correction, with all my respect, there is no uh, lockdown in the country. We have not imposed, we have not introduced a curfew. What we have done was uh, we have introduced limitations on how people can uh, leave their uh, homes. For example, from 9 to 12, we only allow um, uh, people uh, above the age of 65 to do shopping. But otherwise, uh, if uh, people go to work, if people would like to have some uh, like jogging or, uh, or walking around, or if they have to go to a bank, or if they have to go to pharmacy, we definitely allow people to do so. Uh, where we have made uh, strict uh, restrictions is definitely the kindergartens and the schools. Uh, so, far, uh, so far, our evaluation is that uh, there is no easing to take place uh, regarding the um, restrictive uh, measures. We uh, make a, uh, let's say, overview on a uh, weekly basis. The next one uh, will be done during the cabinet session on uh, Wednesday, and uh, we'll see whether circumstances allow any kind of easings. But so far, uh, so far I have to say that our um, restrictive measures, the limitations, work out because so far we were able to uh, slow down the spread of the crisis and definitely a spread of the virus and definitely we do not want to take uh, any unnecessary risks because once again I want to say that our first duty is to protect the life and the health of the Hungarian people. One strategy that you've employed is passing a new law to enable the Prime Minister to rule by decree. When you've already got a, a two-third majority in Parliament, why was that necessary? Look, I, I don't think you should um, uh, consider it as a huge surprise because uh, all countries in the European Union, but basically I could say whole con all countries in the whole world, uh, introduced uh, such kind of uh, regulations. Definitely, under current um, circumstances, we have to be able to make quick decisions. 
That's why the parliament has uh, given the right to the uh, government to make decrees, but, but only in accordance uh, with protecting the people, the economy and the country from the virus. So it's not an unlimited authorization. This authorization uh, is only valid for decrees according uh, to the protective uh, measures uh, against the um, pandemic situation. Look, we have to be quick here. Can you just uh, here, clarify uh, you for me, sorry to interrupt quick, for a minister, uh, can you clarify for me the yes. difference in passing a law using this decree rather than, which would be speedy, passing it through parliament when you've still already got that two thirds majority? Why do you need the decree? Look, even if you have a two-third majority in the parliament, uh, it would take um, at least around two weeks uh, to uh, go through a normal procedure when it comes to uh, lawmaking. But when it comes to decrees, you can basically make it in a couple hours. And I don't think I have to explain it uh, too lengthily, uh, how much it matters currently, uh, how quick you can make your decision. So instead of two weeks, within like one or two hours, you can make a decision. Nowadays, it can save lives. And for how long is this state of emergency going to be in place in Hungary? This entirely depends on the parliament. Because what the parliament has made as a law uh, says that the conclusion of this current uh, state of danger uh, is going to be decided by the parliament itself. So basically, the government has given this right to the parliament the parliament has the um, authorization of the highest level in a democracy. So we think that this is the most democratic solution to this situation. So it's up to the parliament when uh, this state of danger is going to be concluded. Talking about what's democratic, if I could just quote from what the European Parliament ruled on Friday, uh, they said that this was an indefinite state of emergency, that you'd authorise the government to rule by decree without time limit, and that that weakened the emergency oversight of Parliament. What would you say in response to that? Look, if you allow me, I would like to um, uh, stress here two things. First, uh, the law is only uh, three pages long. So um, I would have been extremely happy if members of the European Parliament uh, had read uh, that law. Once again, it's not that long. You have the English translation uh, at disposal, so it would have been a very easy job. Because if I look at the resolution of the Parliament, I have the suspicion that uh, um, the MEPs have uh, spoken before reading. On the other hand, uh, you know, European uh, Parliament keeps Hungary under a continuous uh, attack by political motivation in the recent years, basically since uh, 2010, uh, since we have been in office, and then since 2015, since the migration crisis has hit in. And uh, we have uh, been representing a very strong uh, anti-migration policy, which definitely goes against the uh, European uh, mainstream and definitely goes against the position of the European Parliament. So basically, uh, we got used to these kind of attacks uh, made by the European Parliament. But many times these attacks are based on perception and, and, and not on facts. You know, when, um, when I had the last... But some um, facts, um, sorry to interrupt, some facts are that 14 EU ministers. members, sorry, Foreign Minister, 14 EU members, the EU Commission, the EU yes. Parliament, US Senators, have all criticised this emergency law. So what is it, from your perspective, that they've misunderstood? What haven't they got? Look, if we go through the facts, if we go through uh, what these colleagues have said, they said that there's an unlimited authorization for the prime minister, which is not true. This is fake. This is a lie. The Hungarian prime minister and the Hungarian government can only make decrees in accordance with the protection of the people against the pandemic situation. Second, uh, when they say that uh, Hungary uh, introduced uh, uh, this law without kind of a concrete date as a conclusion, uh, as a, a, a loan, uh, this is a fake, this is a lie as well, because there are four EU member states which have a similar uh, kind of regulation, meaning no exact date uh, as conclusion. Third, there are four other countries in the European Union which made a regulation that the government can prolong uh, the uh, state of emergency or state of danger without uh, the approval uh, of the parliament. So portraying this Hungarian legislation, uh, this Hungarian law, as if it was, you know, kind of extraordinary, uh, is, is simply fake. This is simply uh, not true. So these are political uh, attacks uh, on us. When it comes to factual debates, we are always ready. I'm very happy to take part in all these. But, you know, debating about the perception, 
it doesn't really make sense. So first read and then second speak and then uh, it makes sense to debate. Are you not concerned about the perception though? Because it almost you might come to the conclusion that Hungary doesn't want to be in the EU. Do you want to be in the EU? And if I just uh, talk about some things that uh, Viktor Orban said when criticised by the likes of people like Ursula von der Leyen, he said these people are the enemies of Hungary. So if you see them as your enemies, why are, you, why are you in the European Union? What are your motivations? What are you trying to get out of it? We are members of the European Union and we will be members of the uh, European Union. Do you European want to be Union. members of but the European Union? Of if the they're Euro so-called your enemies, yeah, sure, is that what sure, you sure. want? No. no, come on. So once again, we will be members of the European Union. We want to be members of the European Union, but we want the European Union to be strong based on strong member states. So meaning... But it seems that, uh, like you don't respect the European Union. In, in fact, you've actually criticised the European Parliament by saying they've come to conclusions without even reading the documentation. So if they're making decisions, in, in your opinion, they're not even taking them seriously, why would you stay in relationship with them? So if I may answer now, I make an additional attempt, and maybe this time I can uh, conclude. So once again, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very anti-democratic approach, with, uh, which try to suggest that the uh, European Parliament and the European Commission has a right to uh, criticize member states, that member states do not have the right to respond. This is very anti-democratic uh, approach. So once again, we are happy to take part in the debates about the future, of the European Union. We are definitely against the approach which uh, tries to uh, create a United States of uh, Europe. We definitely um, represent a position which says that the, a strong European Union must be based on strong member states. So definitely uh, we will take part in these debates. We will represent our position in these debates, but we will be members of the European Union and we are interested in EU to be strong. But member states have to be uh, strong as well. And when it comes to unfair criticism towards Hungary, we will always respond. We will always respond, be sure. One thing that you have come under criticism for is cutting funding to political parties in recent weeks, particularly minority parties. And that is what critics are saying might be undermining democracy in the country. What would you say in response to that? Um, you know, uh, we are now basically restructuring our budget. Because this um, situation uh, created by the uh, virus is a totally new situation. So obviously, the basis on, ba on which we have uh, planned our budget back next year, uh, back last year, is uh, totally invalid now. So we have to entirely restructure the budget, and we definitely need financial resor resources to fight the uh, challenges regarding this uh, coronavirus. So everybody has to take part. Uh, in this uh, issue. And this is political parties, this is banks, this is economy, so everybody. So uh, we have um, made a general ruling which says that half uh, of the financial support given to all political parties, including the ruling parties, will be cut and this amount of money will serve uh, the uh, protection uh, measures uh, against uh, the virus. But we do not really have a debate uh, on that, uh, I think all parties can accept that all of us have to contribute to this fight. Thank you very much for speaking to us, Hungary's Foreign Minister Peter Siate.